International's Network for Public Schools is a national nonprofit organization that uh, focuses on school development and school support to ensure that we have equitable outcomes for newcomer, recently arrived immigrant students and refugees. With the current changing landscape, it is important that the teachers know how to adapt to that shift in demographics and really serving and catering their instruction to the students in front of them. Across our district, we're seeing an increase in newcomer students in our schools and really saw like we need to improve the services that we're providing them from education to social emotional support. But a lot of what was happening was outside of the classrooms and we were having success, but we're like, how do we bring them into the classroom to serve more students? I can use, I can use. give one, get one. Want, to practice, to practice. English. English. I have had students who have been in the country for maybe two weeks. We need a lot of professional development around language objectives. What can you do as a teacher to make students you know, practice English, to write in English, to hear English? The International Network for Public Schools focuses on five core principles. Heterogeneity and collaboration, experiential learning, language and content integration, localized autonomy, and one learning model for all. For our teachers who are new to the program, a lot of them would really have to get some form of professional development around developing empathy for their students. So one of the things that we offer, for example, in our summer institutes is this workshop called Experiencing the International's Approach, where a workshop is basically run in another language. Nous allons présenter, nous allons demander quelques questions de vous. In the first half of the lesson, it was much more of the traditional Western hierarchical, the teacher's way, and it's a lecture, and you do this. Combinaison. <laughs> tu as combinaison. Tu as 17 ans, 18 ans. Mais... I felt very anxious um, and a little bit afraid of the teacher because I wanted, didn't want to mess up, and um, also felt very shy and did not want to participate. And then eventually I was just bored because I was like, I have no idea what this person is saying. And then you then take that same instruction, but you model it where you put them in groups, where there's some form of scaffolding, some available forms of structured language they could use in the class. And then you see the shift in the way teachers are able to produce products that they thought they weren't able to do. He used a different tone of voice. He would approach students differently and he pushed the community and the members of each table to engage with each other and support each other. Teachers of newcomers often teach in isolation from other teachers. We see professional development and learning as places for learning with each other among adults is equally important as the way in which you would structure the kinds of learning experiences you want for your students. Students need to interact. Students need to participate with each other. Students need to help each other because if they don't have anyone else to practice English with, how are they going to speak, right? So that's one of the things I loved about the model. It really encourages student collaboration. So um, Alex, what is your name and what is your coordinate? My name is Alex and my coordinate is B75. What is your coordinate? It's F. International classrooms have more intentional ways of integrating language um, in the content courses. So what does it look like to have academic discourse in the language of mathematics? What does it look like in a social studies context? And so I think it's important that you teach that explicitly and it's embedded into your practice. One thing that I do not see in, the, in your answers, guys, is the word units. So make sure you're, you're using the word units, so like five units to the left. In the past, we'll think that, oh yeah, we need to learn English first and then learn the content, right? 
But then we realized that no, we can actually do both things at the same time. We always have the content objective and the language objective. We have word banks for daily English, uh, academic vocabulary for math, you know, technical words. First, we must practice our keywords. Past tense verb. Past tense verb. Sequence word. Sequence word. We are very tightly aligned in the language functions that we are teaching. So uh, it's like the best feeling ever when a student tells you, oh, miss, we learned this in, in biology class. We learned this in math today. And they make those connections between the content areas and language structures. We can't expect teachers to do this work in isolation. They have to be done across different disciplines in order for the learning to actually be reinforced, but also a way for teachers to really learn from one another. When I compare to what we were providing newcomers before to what we're providing them now, it's night and day. Our students feel comfortable in the classroom, do really think that the teachers believe in them, and our, our kids are engaged in like content. The teacher are really good here. If you have any personal problem, you can tell them, and uh, they are even uh, stay after school and helping you. Students too, like they become my friends, and they are they are also helping to speak English. I really want to frame this conversation as a transformation approach for systems change within a school district. And essentially, this program is about continuous learning of all of us as a system to achieve greater outcomes for kids. Our English language learners are brilliant learners. And it's fundamental to International's approach. It's fundamental to what we are trying to do as a district, that we see our students and the riches that they bring from the countries they are coming from as assets, and that they are brilliant, brilliant learners. They're just learning English. <laughs>